Here's what you need to know before you see Cocaine Bear. Nothing. You don't need to read a comic book from 1978. The bear wasn't introduced at the end of the Eternals. If you've ever heard the words cocaine or bear before, you're completely up to speed. Don't come to this movie for a pop quiz, okay? As Nicole Kidman said, we come to Cocaine Bear for magic. And you're not gonna see any articles after, like Cocaine Bear ending explained. You're just gonna see ones that say, remember the ending of Cocaine Bear? We do too, it fucking ruled. This movie will be conservatively one billion times better than Citizen Kane. Conservatively. And here we go. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Man, you come right out of a comic book. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. You will bow down before me! It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies for Nurse New Bully. Me host Leroy, aka Booger Sugar, with my co-host. Uh yeah, this is Eli, aka E Dub 209. There we go. Oh, I get that reference. I get that reference. I'm an old oh, motherfucker too, so I get the nerd. Reference. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know, that's Robocop, but yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah, I want to say uh good morning to George R R R Martin and George R R Martin only. <laughs> you saw that? Yes, yeah, I saw that. This is a great way to close out Black History Month. So yeah, <laughs> just want to let you know that you are not getting that Game of Thrones book. So you can get that. <laughs> He's gonna pop a dick pill and it is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, but we're just gonna jump into it and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, you know what? We're gonna do some house cleaning before we get into it. Because there's some something that happened last week. Eli actually posted on uh, our fa- Facebook page. Oh yeah, did some okay numbers. Did okay. This page, this thing right here. We talked about Ant Man three last week. We talked about the King King Council Con- uh, Council of Kings, and people are confused because they thought that was a Rick and Morty reference. Uh, I've never seen Rick and Morty. I don't know what that is, oh, but apparently yeah. Rick and Morty there's does a Council that. of Ricks. Is there's it? also okay. Council of Reeds. Like I, you know. I know about the Council of Reeds. That's John yeah. Hickman doing his John Hickman bullshit. There's a Council of Spider-Man now, also. But Is yeah, everybody's yeah. got a council. Everybody council now. Yeah, we we got councils. <laughs> yeah, we cut off on this. <laughs> but yeah, so everybody think that's a, a a a Rick and Morty reference. It's not a Rick and Morty reference. It's like decades before Rick and Morty. So mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, that's all I want to say. Uh, Last thing, last thing I want to say about that. Okay, this is personal. Just want to talk about it. Last a uh, few weeks, a uh, few years ago, I think uh, everybody remembers about the Equifax lawsuit that was going along, and people saying that they were doing something. So I signed up for it. I signed up for Equifax. I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it was a long time, like three, four years ago, something like that. But it was a long time ago. But the thing is, my check came in. Yeah, oh, yeah. No hey, guess how much it was? Two dollars. Eh, a little bit bigger, five dollars and twenty one cents. <laughs> so yeah, that's my that's my big settlement check I got from this. So I'm gonna so after this show, I'm going to go get some some cocaine and hookers, and that five dollars that is gonna be gone. So yeah, hell yeah. I don't know what kind of hookers you can get with five dollars, but it is Jackson. But yeah, uh, Vic, what's going on? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Vic's in the house. Yeah, Ooh. Vic is in the house. What's going on with you? So we're just gonna just no more preliminaries. We're just gonna just jump into it. Um. Uh, Okay, so basically what this show is going to be this week is that we watch some movies. Uh, before we jump into it, Eli, did you, other than, is Megan on the movie you watched this week? Pretty much. Cool, no problem, no problem. So I'm going to basically talk about a movie and go in length about it, just talk about what I thought about it. Uh, Cocaine Bear. Is you saw the it? Thing. Yeah, I saw it. I saw no Cocaine shit. Bear. Yeah, no I saw shit. it actually in a, not packed theater, but a semi- active theater so it wasn't just like just me by myself like it's been like the last three years in movies there's actually a nice size crowd in there so yeah so i did talk about uh saw cocaine bear we'll talk about it uh matter of fact before we even talk about cocaine bear i'm actually going to talk about the true story behind cocaine bear because people don't know that it's a true story yeah people don't even know it's a real movie they think it's like some tiktok shit you know yes it's a real <laughs> movie i went and saw it and i will talk about it review it see what i thought about it before we get into it though eli I want you to, we're going to do the uh, old classic, the old trusty dust. You're going to pull it out the vault, the box office numbers. Give it to me. What is the number one movie of the week? 
Did Cocaine Bear beat Disney? It did not. Oh, damn it. But it was close. It was close. I was just, I'm going off the top of the head with this. But Ant-Man did $32 million and Cocaine Bear did 23 So yeah, not, not that bad. Not that bad. Although with all the marketing Cocaine Bear had, you think it would have made more money than that. However, here's the thing. Ant-Man Quantumania actually had the biggest second week drop off in any Marvel, well, MCU movie ever. So, okay. Yeah. So, that oh, was, that was, so it turns out it's not good. <laughs> I, that's what I was trying to tell you. It's the <laughs> second week. The second week is everything. So yeah. Uh, box off time. Jake, you missed it. We just did it. We just did it, Jake. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So yeah. But here's the thing that it was close because Friday, Cocaine Bear actually beat Ant-Man. So that made people nervous. They were like, uh oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? You know. So yeah, it turns out Ant Man's biggest enemy wasn't Kane the Conqueror, it was a bear on you know that knows cocaine. how to party. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so ain't that the weirdest shit going on? So yeah, that's what's happening. So yeah, we're just gonna jump into it. Uh before we get into it, we're just gonna talk about the true story behind Cocaine Bear because we do want to jump into it because the cocaine bear real life story is very different from the movie. However, the real story is just as insane as the movie, except it's different. So, okay. that's how the story starts off. Uh, like, and the thing is, like the movie, I would say that like the first ten minutes of the movie is the real story. Like, it's it's basically that they playing like real footage with Tom Brokaw and all the stuff like that. So they didn't CGI him; they had the money for that. They basically told the real story. With Tom Brokaw. Basically, what it is is like this crooked cop that uh quit the force and became an ex-drug dealer he was flying from somewhere to missouri by the time he got to atlanta his plane was too heavy so he dumped the cocaine in atlanta in, in a park and he actually jumped at the plane also but the thing was he was so high on cocaine himself that he opened the chute at the wrong time and fell to his death i was like he was so high he survived like, hey, no 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 <laughs> what like that, that movie crank like <laughs> he just got up and just started running <laughs> so no they didn't Woo-hoo, happen so, faster faster <laughs> so no they didn't happen so yes yeah, so the cocaine fell in the woods and a bear ate the cocaine but here's the thing here's where it varies the bear overdosed on the cocaine about maybe like an hour later after ingesting it that was it they go on a killing spree then go through the woods and ingesting that's it but here's where the story gets wild <laughs> that's not where it ends okay so they found the bear And the bear was in good enough condition that they stuffed the bear and stuck it in a mall. Oh, Jesus. So this is real. So this is a mall mall in Kentucky. And they named the the bear Pablo Escobar. (laughs) This is real. (laughs) You know, although I do think that they sold the bear like about like last year, sometime like that. But up until then, the bear was in Kentucky Fun Mall. You could go there, see cocaine bear, take a picture with them. And that was it. He's like a tourist attraction there, or at least was. So, yeah. All right. So, that's the real story of Cocaine Bear. Of course, the movie goes a completely different direction, you know. But, yeah, but I just thought, and I was like, okay, that's weird as hell. And they said that somewhere, like, Waylon Jennings bought it because Waylon Jennings was trying to buy drugs from the dude, and he kind of, like, knew the guy. But I don't know. That's all conjecture. That's all yeah. me making it up. But, yeah. All right. So, let's get to it. So, let's talk about Cocaine Bear. What do I think about this movie? Okay. So, the main thing about Cocaine Bear is it exactly what you think it is. Now, the reason I think that the marketing, the movie didn't make as much money as I thought it was going to make is because the marketing was so good. I think the marketing was too good because people thought the movie like it was a TikTok skit or a, a SNL skit, stuff like that. And at the, at the end of the day, that's what the movie is. It's a 90 minute SNL skit. Now, keep in mind that that's the best thing about this movie. It's 90 minutes. It's not three hours. This ain't cocaine bear in game and no shit like that. It gets in, it gets out. That's it. You know, so it gets to the point. So it's the runtime. It's got a three act structure. You get in, that's it. Like I said, the first 10 minutes is about the real life story of it. And then it diverts from there. Now, here's the thing where I got to, like I said, I, I, I had everything ready for you. Like I was going to be like, this is cinema. This is, you know, <laughs> Oscar worthy. I was going to just, just go into it. This is going to kill the MCU. Deep, you know. deep, deep. Exactly. I, I would, even though it wasn't, I was going to just say that shit, but I was just like, I can't. I got to be honest. I gotta what be honest. cocaine is really about. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> they could have did all the stuff, but they didn't. So the first out, with the, no, I said like the first act, the first act of this movie, like first 30 minutes after they got through the real life cocaine shit, then you meet the characters, you know, the people that the cocaine bear is going to eat later on anyway. And it's pretty much just, random person 
give them a quirk. Oh, this person juggles. This person favorite band is Flock of Seagulls. Or some shit. You know, it's just random shit that has nothing to do with the story. They just kind of just padding out. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of movie in this movie, so they just got to just make up shit and pad it out. You know. So, and the thing was, they were telling all these jokes, trying to be funny like that, and it wasn't funny for the first act. It wasn't funny. I, I, I could feel the crowd, like I feel the industry crowd, just like, okay, when's the movie gonna get good and shit, you know? So it, it was like that at first. However, when you get to that second act, whoo boy, that second act it goes. The movie starts cooking with grease at that point, firing on all <laughs> cylinders. You got a coked out bear eating people hunting for cocaine because the bear can sniff cocaine wherever it is so if you get in the way of it and the cocaine it's coming after your ass and you got everybody in the woods you got the uh the drug dealers that lost cocaine in the woods the cops looking for the drug dealers in the woods you got a mom looking for kids in the woods you got uh random uh hoodlum teenagers in the woods park rangers in the woods so it's plenty of people for the bear to eat (laughs) you know and that's pretty much what they're there for you know so it's that uh i do want to know like you want to know how to compare to other hot you know horror movies and things like that uh how was i horror movies (laughs) that's what i was about to say okay so you can't judge this by horror movie standards eli (laughs) i didn't think it was gonna be okay like a comedy like okay that's exactly what it is it's a it's a dark comedy that's what it is like i said the movie in the first act wasn't funny however in the second act it was funny because of the killings because the way the the killings were framed and uh it was <laughs> funny the way they was doing it so you got people half the people in the crowd was you know cringing because because the gore was too much for them and the other people was laughing because of the gore so the gore made it funny because of the way the bear was killing people just and it was just enough gore. over the top violence and shit it was over the top balance it was basically like her itchy and scratchy cartoon you know just yeah. just all over the place you know so it but they didn't like and then there was some some gory moments in it like not for you Eli <laughs> <laughs> not not your standards you know <laughs> for the casual crowd some people said for, for some people i was saying they said the movie was a little bit too gory for them they said some people had to look away me i was laughing my ass off some <laughs> some parts in the movie they did kind of cut away before the bear got a little bit too crazy some parts they showed and it was just there and you got the people looking at that dismembered parts like oh what the fuck you know and it, it was funny the way they were doing it you know but there was never a po- moment where you know it was like you feel you know scared or ten- there's no tension there's no suspense. It's even when the bear is sneaking up on people, you just laugh like, how is this bear sneaking up on people? It's high. That's how, you know. So it's, it's never a point where you're scared for anybody. You're just laughing your ass off these people. You just want to know how this bear going to kill the next person in the most gruesome way possible. You know, that's that's it. It's just like racking up the kill count. So, yes, it is a comedy first with horror elements. But don't go in this thinking it's a horror movie. It's not. You know, it's yeah. it's a dark comedy. That's what it is. It's uh, all in the title. <laughs> it's all in the title. The, the movie is exactly what it is. It, it's not selling you a different movie than what it is. It's a bear on cocaine running around killing people and sniffing cocaine. That's that's what it is. Um, like I said, this is Ray Liotta's last movie. He plays a drug lord, you know, a mobster, which is you know a fitting way for Ray Liotta to go out. <laughs> but that's that's what you expect, man. So, um, like I said, that second act because it's about twenty twenty five minutes of that second act alone is worth it to see this movie the first act you get a slog second act is there and the second act is so good you're going to be on a high pun intended by the time you get to the third act even though the third <laughs> act isn't as strong you're still amped up for that second act you're just like okay let's let's see where this goes you got that you know? bump and you're like woo exactly <laughs> i want to uncut version uh the fucks what no uh, no, no, actually, no. Somebody fucks the bear, or the bear fucks them. <laughs> no, uh, can I give you a spoiler? I'm gonna give you a spoiler. Vic, I'm gonna give you a spoiler. Eli, I'm gonna give you a spoiler. Jake, I'm gonna give you a spoiler. Everybody, spoiler. Okay, so the bear is female. That's okay. Okay. So the bear's not gonna fuck anybody because the bear's female, you know. And the bear has cubs. Oh shit! Who are also on cocaine. Well, now it's sad. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> now but this nah, movie's tragic. Nah, it, it's actually not tragic because then the bear turns into mama bear. Because I think I got to spoil it for you. Okay, because the thing is, the at the end of the movie, Ray Liotta turns out to be the bad guy, like the main bad guy of the movie. So in the third act, you're rooting for the bear, you know, versus Ray Liotta. Well, I was rooting for the bear anyway. I mean, you'd be rooting for the bear anyway. But at the end of the movie, the bear is really the good person at, at the end of this movie. Like you're rooting for the bear. To you know, win at the end because Ray Liotta is such a piece of shit in the movie. You know, like I said, Ray Liotta he plays mobsters. 
very well and he plays it very well in this movie and everybody was good in the movie like i said ice cube song was good in the movie uh your boy what's his name han solo I, han solo he was good in the movie yeah mm-hmm. he he was good and the thing he is him be- and ice cube son play like drug dealers but drug dealers like with a heart of gold you know they get in the car and they talk to each other like man how's your wife man how's how's your kids you know so they make you feel sympathetic for these drug dealers you know so i thought that was pretty cool you know so but they had a whole bunch of other subplots going on she's like man hurry up and kill these people already you know and how is did. that one guy the the ikea guy the that one ikea dude TikTok dude I, I feel like i gotta spoil it man uh he's killed off almost immediately well it looked like in the trailer it looked like he was he died right away like, yeah he died right away he's like barely in the movie but the thing is when he showed up immediately like the crowd like feel like yeah you know like people start clapping you know like i guess people know him like they use him to just sell the movie but he was he wasn't in it he was basically just can't fight it they didn't even give him a backstory i don't even think they gave him a name he just shows up get killed boom that's it you know so but it was but his part in the movie was the part of that 20 minutes i was talking about that's the best part of the movie so yeah so when he's in the movie that whole it, the movie like gets energetic like fast paced like it it goes at that point right there so yeah the movie's found all of a so yes i would Go see this movie. No, this is not the Citizen Kane of, of Bear movies or this is not going to win an Oscar. This is not real cinema. This is basically another trashy B movie that just happened to have good actors in it. Otherwise, if you had like nobody actors, this, this shit would be on Tubi, you know. But it is a step up above, say, like Snakes on the Pain Plane or Sharknado or. Uh, it sounds like movie. Sharknado with like a bigger budget, basically. <laughs> It it is it is yeah. yeah and the bear is CGI so yeah so it's not a real bear you can't get well, a real bear to do this shit anymore it sounds like a comedy you know yeah. it's it's a comedy and we we've talked about how comedies are kind of difficult these days it's hard right. to make like a straight up comedy these days because people are afraid to laugh at shit or right and even this one is going to be tough because like I said it's like I said it's the comedy comes from the gore and it may be a little bit too much for some people. But I was like, man, but the thing is, if you go to a movie about a bear hopped up on cocaine, you should be on board for the crazy shit that happens in this movie. I mean, you shouldn't yeah. be, oh, what is this? No, this is that's not Fonzie Bear or no shit like that. No, this is a damn bear. So, so yeah, pretty awesome. Overall, I'm gonna give the uh score of this movie 3.5 out of 5. I think I'm giving it a higher score than like other people are giving it to. Because I got a fucked up sense of humor, so I thought she was laughing. So I'm not. Although, do I wish the movie had more of a social commentary in it? Kind of. <laughs> uh, we don't laugh for bad talking to snakes on the plane, Leroy. Right? Sorry, I just did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is Pity complained about this movie? Well, the thing is, like I said, it's based on a true story, and it's a CGI bear, so it's not a real bear. Now, if it was a real bear, and I think uh, there seems like a dude, you know, maybe like stunt double, so it's not a real person, you know. And I said, so there were no people hurt in this movie. I was about to say, oh yeah, do I wish the movie had like a social commentary? Like I said, this is a movie in the in the eighties about cocaine, or do we have a movie about uh, Reaganomics and how they fuel the the war on co- uh, cocaine? So was it and, t- this took place in the eighties? It took place in the eighties. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, it took place in nineteen eighty five. The guy that actually was too high and jumped out of his plane shoot, like they they named the guy. It was the same guy in real life. So all that shit happened. You know. So they try to frame it like all this stuff happened, and it, it did play take uh, take place in Atlanta, in that uh that same forest where it happened. This so all this stuff happened. Uh, but yeah, do I wish it had more commentary? Like, okay, uh, the drug is succumb to, uh, you know, the bear succumb to the drugs, just like I don't know, like other communities or like the Nicaraguans coming forward and shit. Like, no, nah, it wasn't none of that. You know, Reagan didn't show up. He didn't down strokes like that. It's just a straight up comedy. No wokeism whatever you want to call it like that it's just that that's it so yeah so 3.5 to 5 i recommend it but i will say this if you want to wait i have a feeling that it will be on universal i mean it will be on peacock next month that works feeling. for me I, I have a feeling don't i have no <laughs> you know no proof of this i just have a strong feeling that seems to be what happens because i haven't yeah. been to a movie theater in months mm-hmm. and i've been just watching everything on peacock on whatever you know mm-hmm. Tubi or you know whatever shit just shit just pops up and, and, and i think that's what's it. gonna happen i think when cocaine bear finally hits like streaming i think it will become a cult classic 
I think it will be. Yeah. It, it it does have that feeling of okay, this is gonna be the, oh, hey, you seen this movie? This movie's wild. It's gonna be that type of movie. It ain't like I don't like going to movies. No, I love going to the movies. I mean, I w- before I moved, I lived like a mile from a movie theater, so I was like constantly. I saw everything, but now I moved and I just just don't get a chance to you know get out as much. And I haven't been able to go to the movies and uh, a movie. The closest movie theater is at least. 15 minutes away now so <laughs> you know so not as convenient for me to get get out to the theaters as what it used it was but yeah but no I, I i've been i wanted this this was like one of the ones one of the movies i've been excited to see i have not seen it yet but yeah i, I want to see it and i'm sure eventually i will you know just like make it <laughs> right because like i said and honestly i i didn't say it last week i mean last month or anything like that like in january but I had a feeling Megan was going to hit streaming like very soon, and it did. When you so, said like, that, I was like, "Ooh!" And I was all week I was like checking Peacock and. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I had a feeling like even January, I was like, "I bet you Megan's going to hit Peacock on February," because Peacock owns you. I mean, Universal owns Peacock, mm-hmm. so all of their movies hit Peacock. That's I'm seeing this a trend. That's what happening. And guess who makes Cocaine Bear? Universal. So it'll that's be on cool. Peacock next month. Sweet. I. I I'm not going to put a guarantee on it. I'm not going to eat a cheeseburger. It'll be the uncut version where the bear fucks. <laughs> it's a it's a woman. It's a, it's a, a female bear. What would a dildo or something? I don't know. We, we females can fuck too, right? <laughs> I, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the whole science behind that. Where, where's AK David when you hit when you need? I'm mean, pretty sure he'll know. <laughs> he'll know all about that. Though. Exactly. The well, actually, of, the sexual anatomy of bears. <laughs> well, it, the the black bear, the grizzly bear, <laughs> <laughs> their sex drive isn't as strong as say the Kodiak. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, but that's all I gotta say about that. Now we can move on to the next one. Like I said, uh, you well, you saw a movie and I saw a movie, and we didn't have to go anywhere to see it. It was there. Uh, we're gonna talk about Megan, and but here's the thing: we're not just talking about Megan. We're talking about Megan, the uncut version, because if you remember. Megan was rated PG-13 in the theaters. It was yeah, a PG-13 no uh, horror movie. But on Peacock, it's unrated. Now, I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen the PG-13 version at all. I was going to compare them. I didn't chance to do that. I just jumped straight to the unrated. <laughs> you I'm like, deep, huh? you... <laughs> I was. I was going to do that. Okay, so this scene, this scene, I, I ain't had time. I had other shit to do. Actually, I was watching the, the, the Lakers game today, but still. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I saw that, and I was just like, I let's jump to the unrated scene, but here's the thing: as far as what I thought about the unrated, I'm like, I can kind of see what they cut out. I can see it up front. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty there's, obvious. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, as far as uh, unrated version, you can tell it's an unrated version because there's there's gore in it, there's yeah. f bombs in it. You know, it's there. Uh, the one where she put, what Jake? What what the hell? <laughs> no, Megan doesn't fuck anybody in this. <laughs> Yeah, I was... it's it's a doll. It's <laughs> you thinking Megan of Megan Fox or whatever. <laughs> I, I guess. Although I do. Okay, Eli, did you pick up on this? That boy in the woods. That was a little creepy. I did. Remember? That was a little I, creepy. I, I, think, I, I think I I like I yeah. I don't know if that's in the PG thirteen version, but the I watched the uncut version. I thought that was a little, a little like uh, it pushed it pushed it a little bit, which it, I didn't I expect like... it. I wasn't expecting it to go there, you know, because it, yeah. it, it is just sort of a campy, fluffy popcorn horror flick. And, you know, but when it went there, I was like, oh, shit, they're kind of pressing some buttons here. And, oh, no, no, not, not yeah. what Megan did to the boy, what the boy did to Megan. No, I know. I know what you're talking about. When oh, okay, the boy yeah. got on top of Megan. Yeah. Started taking off her, sh- her shoe and shit. I'm like. I was like, oh, what? Shit. What the fuck now? <laughs> now I, like I said, you're right. I don't know if yeah. that's in the PG 13 version or yeah. not, but that was like, okay, this is kind of disturbing. Yeah, know? I've I yeah, I, I thought that too. I was like, wow, they're kind of pushing it right here. Which I <laughs> like I said, this the, the movie was very campy yeah. and and kind of dumb fun, but that scene was like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. But at you the know? same time, when stuff like that happened and the boy gets taken out, you you don't feel bad. No, you're like, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, that, he's that, a piece that, of shit that's anyway. Kind of, yeah. That's kind of the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, sick, twisted justice in horror flicks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing because the thing about uh, in horror movies, like the 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 victim always has to be a, some kind of piece of shit. You know, they drink when they're supposed to, smoke when they're supposed to, a cop, a nurse, whatever. People in uniforms always get off just for no reason. That's just yeah. that's the rule. You know, 
So yeah, so they did it in, in Megan. And the thing about Megan, like we got to talk about Megan, just like like Cocaine Bear wasn't a horror movie; it was a comedy with horror elements. I do feel like Megan was more of a real movie, like it tried to be a real movie, but at the same time, I do feel like it wasn't just a straight up horror movie either. That's that's my that's my no, because I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> that, exactly, that's the thing. And, but but it was funnier than Cocaine Bear. So between the two movies, between Megan yeah. and Cocaine Bear, Megan was the better movie. Yeah, you know, because it was actually a real movie where Cocaine Bear was trying to be a B movie, you know. Yeah. But Megan actually had social commentary. It was actually trying to say yeah. something. It yeah. took those elements, you know, the killer doll trope, and took the the killer robot trope, and combined them into one movie. I was like, okay, cool. So it yeah. now, like I said, you're the horror guy, so I'm gonna defer to you on this. Was it a Chucky ripoff? Uh kind of. It, it. I won't say a straight up like child's play, like the OG where. You know, he he does a voodoo spell and goes into a doll and what have you. I think it has more in common with that Chucky remake that came out a few years ago, where Chucky was like a, a, a an electronic like an AI or something, yeah. AI, and he downloaded himself into the internet and all that shit, and started taking over Tesla cars and drones. That I think it had more in common with that, you know. And when um, she did that in this, also, yeah, and then she did that. Yeah, it was it was more. I, I, I yeah, it, I thought it was more kind of like sci-fi. You know, like robots. You know, like Isaac. I, I used to read a lot of Isaac Asimov. I robot, yeah. And um, and it sort of, you know, they were touching upon some of those elements of the three laws of robotics. You know, the robot can't do to harm to people and all that shit. So it 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 reminded me of all that. Um, but yeah, it, it I felt it was more sci-fi than like sci-fi. There was more of it leaned into sci-fi, whereas Chucky, original Chucky is all about slasher and it, it, it's voodoo spells and, and it has sat- super magic elements satanic, satanic like shit that. yeah and yeah so um yeah i did yes you can read the chucky shit into it but i i i, I thought it was more of she she was an actual robot you know yeah and, and, it, and it does make you i ain't gonna say it makes you think but okay you try to compare them to chucky and you try to compare megan also like i said chucky was clearly supernatural voodoo that's brought in life Mm-hmm. But what brought Megan to life? That's the question. Well, that's the whole thing about, again, back to the AI and mm-hmm. computers learning, you know, learning and um, becoming self-aware. That goes back to Skynet. That goes back to the Matrix. That goes back to, yeah, Isaac Asimov, you know, and William Gibson and, you know, Blade Runner, you know, the where the, the, the androids become self-aware and realize they have an expiration date and they want to know their meaning of existence. It gets into all this existential crap, but right. this movie didn't go that deep into that. I, um, I do feel like it, it, it dipped its toe in the yeah. pool a little bit in there, yeah. but yeah. yeah but at like the end when Mega was like, you, you were playing, like you were playing with forces, you can't even barely comprehend to make yeah. me and stuff. And it's like, okay. Like Cause it, it of, feels like whatever, it's not voodoo, but it's something. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's just that existential robot sort of theme, like like even Ultron sort of touched upon it. Like, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Right. It's sort of in in ro- in science fiction, robots are always a reflection of humanity. You know, the robot, you know, having us meeting its builder. You know, that's sort of a, a representation of man meeting God and asking what what's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Blah, 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 blah. You know, um, and I think that was in, it was a little bit, and they kind of touched upon, they didn't lean into it. They didn't like right. become a main theme. What I think it was about, this was mostly about kids and technology. Cause I thought of Megan Boom. as- It, it was like, really about that. Yeah. yeah. Like Megan was like a cell phone for the little girl. Or iPad or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, and when Wii, she got it taken know. away, she threw tantrums and shit. So it was more about how kids, you know, and technology and where do you draw the line between, you know, that the addiction to like social media and what have you and, you know, all that, that, that's what I felt that leaned into more than anything. Right. Or having like technology, raise your kids, things yeah, like that. Yeah. Cause that, that's all right. You like, you, you exactly right. That's all Megan was. She was just technology like that. So that, yeah. and that's what the movie was trying to go for. It was like, because the aunt isn't paying attention to the daughter. She's yeah. like, well, I'm going to just, Give her all these things, give her the iPad, give her the phone, give her Megan, and let her just do whatever. That way I can do something that matters, you know, because she was a shitty parent, basically. 
you know, iRobot. Uh, iRobot. Hey, okay, we, 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 I think we need to explain it. Eli, can you explain iRobot? We're not I talking robot. about the Will Smith movie. <laughs> but that was based on... It was based, yeah, Isaac, but not it, not really. It was, but it wasn't. It was based on a few of his books. Yeah, you know, it was it was based on a broad themes of Isaac Asimov's stories. You know, um, where yeah, it's a future. Robots are you know part of society, and there's the rules. Like they every the robot three rules three. Rules. I can't the, remember. You know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, what are they? A robot can't harm a human. A robot was protect a human at all times as long as it doesn't contradict with the first law um the third is a robot must protect its own existence as long as it doesn't contradict the first two laws something like that you know yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's it's like the prime directives in robocop you know right um and and it's just about again robots sort of becoming self-aware and re you know learning human behavior and then sort of taking on human attributes and then sort of Becoming confused. Well, about it's, what the, to it's do, the ghost in you know? the machine trope. That's what it is. The ghost in the machine yeah, trope. Yeah. yeah. Or, so, or like what was that? Tom King vision. Tom he King. Really Tom King leaned, vision. Right. Where he made a family he made and a souls family and, like that. Yeah. and basically questioned what is the meaning of life? What is right. the meaning of existence? And that's like I said, robots are a reflection of humanity. But we'll see Megan, and to give Megan credit, they go a little bit deeper than that because it's not just about the robots, it's about the toys also, pretty much any in inanimate object. We can take it back to Pinocchio. Pinocchio. It's the yeah. same thing. Like I said, the, the soul, real boy. Yeah. He the real boy. Real yeah. Boy, yeah. And it wasn't that Megan wanted to be a real person. She just wanted to. What did Megan want? Companionship. But she even wants... she didn't want that at the end. I mean, want, yeah, she wanted existence. She wants more life. Like, like the oh, synthetics I, in, in, she, in Blade okay. Runner. Blade You're right. Runner. She they was just trying to life. protect because they were yeah. trying to they were trying to end it. Basically, they yeah. found out what she was. They're trying to take it out. Yeah. At that point, she was all about survival. Yeah, that's what Hal did in two thousand one. Yeah, Hal basically took over the whole ship. It's like, nope, you're not turning me off. Same thing that with Blade sense. Runner. Those synthetics in Blade Runner. They wanted their expiration date was 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 coming right. up. They were going to be turned off. They went back to Earth. I want more life, fucker. You know, right? Because <laughs> that is the prime directive of any living organism. To yeah. survive. Yeah. So deep shit. Yeah. yeah. And just like, I mean, I know everyone hates, I know everybody hates the Matrix sequels, but that's the purpose of Neo going to the source and meeting the the architect. It's essentially mm -hmm. him meeting God, him meeting right. whatever, the, the creator of the universe, the creator of his of existence. And then right. saying, why, why the first why thing he I asked here? him, why am I here? Why exactly. am I here? <laughs> What's the purpose of this? You know, and that's you know, we can't really answer it, but that's essentially what a robot is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's deeper dive. I've seen <laughs> Megan. Not we haven't even really talked about Megan. We talking about like around Megan. Yeah, something. we <laughs> talked about you know what what brought. I mean, I think I, I think because it's deep, it it sort of brushes up on all these sci fi tropes. I think that's what makes the movie a little like for me. It made it enjoyable because I, I recognized the tropes, and when she's like. You know, started asking questions and some of the shit she's saying, she's like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, are you are you gonna turn me off? You're no, you can't turn me off. Like, oh shit, you know. And, and see um, the thing, you can actually tell when Megan was about to turn because okay, remember at the beginning of the movie when when Megan was telling uh the, the girl, okay, wash your hands, you know, put yeah. a coaster here, do that. But the more Megan got upset with the aunt. She stopped telling her that. So when the girl put the coaster down, she didn't say shit because she was pissed off at her. So you could see her going down that road to begin with. I was like, it's like little bitty thing. So yeah. Yeah. Um uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. you know, like uh, you know, don't turn like, yeah. I, you you're you're not I control myself now. You don't tell me what to do. I you you don't turn me off. I'm the prime user. I mean, what's that Star Trek episode where data um, oh, it, you, you you lost me on that. <laughs> where data data was like they were they were trying to um they had that hearing whether data is a sentient being or is he just a machine, you know? Okay, I never saw that episode, but it sounded yeah, like sound it's one of the next generations, and that that was in, that's one of the most interesting. Don't you? Hey, I love the Matrix. I love all the Matrix. I don't <laughs> Not all of them, but are we getting TikTok Eli doing a Mega Dan? Oh, Jake, that was the next thing I was about to bring up. I'm gonna let Eli finish what he's about to say about data uh being what is a man, you know? Yeah. But but again, like it's it's it goes back to the, an existential crisis. 
the robot has an existential crisis over questioning its purpose. Why? What? What is it? What? What is the meaning of life? Which is right. What again, is life? Yeah. yeah. It's, it gets into deep philosophical theology that humans tend to ask their, ask ask ourselves. You know. Um, like I said, I'm not a Star Trek watch, but I imagine that Data, if his body is destroyed, he just upload his, you yeah. know, memory into another body and just, you know, keep it going. You know. Yeah. You know. We can't do that. We yeah. so with us, you know. But yeah, I mean, I think it 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 had just enough tropes to remind you of all those all these other movies where robots go psycho and take over and shit, where it that's what made this movie enjoyable because it was goofy, cheesy, campy, and funny. Um, that's what it looked like from the trailer. The trailer looked cheesy. The movie was cheesy. I got exactly what I was expecting. Um, and because I watched the uncut version, the, it had pretty solid gore too. So. Right. So like I said, I'm gonna go back and watch the PG 13 version just to compare. But like I said, the R rated version, it's, it's an R rated version. So. And when she fought the, when the little girl got the robot, there was that robot fight. When they- <laughs> I saw they coming a mile away. I said, cause when they went into the room, I'm like, where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? Yeah. It's like, like N209 coming. and Robocop. <laughs> yeah, right. You, know, I you, you didn't meet the last member of the family. I like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let, let's talk about this dance. Okay, you, you talk about the TikTok dance. Uh, uh, I'm working on it, Jake. I'll let you know when it's finished. But yeah. I'll but do the, yeah. I'll do the fucking. <laughs> the See, that's, that's... I'll do the biz, you know. Right, because I'm thinking, Eli, <laughs> that's what's going on right now. That dance, like in the context of the movie, made no fucking sense. It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. But we know why yeah. it's there. Yeah. Because of Wednesday. That's why it's there. <laughs> because Wednesday <laughs> did that damn dance. That dance went everywhere. People didn't even watch the Netflix show. They just saw that dance. There's like a, a million you know, goth chicks and just regular chicks and even dudes on there doing the Wednesday dance like that. Well, so that's now the, that's the scene that stands out in the trailer. Like when the right. trailer dropped, everyone was talking about I mean, that's Megan the money shot. This, that's yeah, the money Megan. shot. Right. <laughs> do the Megan dance. I've yeah. seen it on talk shows. They will have like a Megan cosplay show. We just do that dance with Wednesday. I seen Wednesday and Megan do the dance at the same time, like a dance off. I'm like, they really send you on a dance because they know. If that dance catches on, it's going to catch on TikTok, and TikTok will promote the movie. That's where we're going to promote these movies. Yeah, Megan just missed Halloween by a couple months. There would have been a bunch. They they would have sold Megan costumes. Would have sold like hotcakes. It would have sold like crazy because they were promoting everywhere. So we would have had TikTok yeah. and Megan at the same time. But I guess they didn't think it was a good enough movie to put out doing doing Halloween. So let's put just dumping in, in January. But that's where we're going right now. Like social media is pretty much in control of these movies right like, like i said megan they're dancing at just for tiktok cocaine bear is a meme it's all it is it's a meme they just know you put that out there cocaine bear is going to trend on twitter put out there and that's it they will sell the movie for for us and that's pretty much what we're going now any movie going forward is going to have to find some way to trend on social media either tiktok or twitter or facebook or instagram or they'll have to do something so you're going to see more wild dance like that. It's only a matter of time before a Marvel movie has a weird TikTok dance that they throw in a trailer. I'm not talking about that dead dance that uh, Starlo did. I'm talking about like a real choreographed shit, you know, <laughs> that you can do on TikTok and do it like that. I, don't know who I mean, remember, it. Man, <laughs> you remember when Baron Zemo, you know. <laughs> Baron Zemo. And I bet you that was an accident. But when they did it, they was just like, oh, shit. Baron Zemo is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but that's exactly what I'm talking about. They're going to start doing that. I bet that's why they push back the marbles right now. They're like, we need a TikTok dance. Miss Marvel, make up some shit. So by the time the trailer comes out, she's going to do some shit on there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But overall, I like Megan. Oh, uh, yeah, I had fun with it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give Megan a four. It's a four for me. Sure, I'll give it a four. I mean, it, yeah, because you you made me bump. Just talking to you, it made me bump it up. So yeah. I, I, yeah, it was exactly like what it looked like. Like, yeah, you know, it it looked cheesy. It was cheesy. I had a good time. I had fun with it. I left yeah. my brain at the door, but it, it it actually reminded me of better sci-fi movies. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the thing but, was, I know. feel like that even though it is a Chucky ripoff, it doesn't just like lean on that. Yeah, it's it's trying to say more than that. It's like. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, remember, we'll take the bones of it, but we have more to say than that. Yeah, and I remember when the trailer dropped, the Chucky TV season two was still on. 
Mm-hmm. So there was a bunch of like memes on, you know, in all, on all the horror sites, all the horror pages. The horror community was dropping all these Chucky versus Megan memes and shit. So mm-hmm. it was always there. But yeah, yeah. I, but I, really, I, I feel like they can go. And you know what? My favorite part is somebody, somebody just posted something in here. Somebody just made a comment. What do you think the sequel is going to be? Okay, so at the end of the movie, uh, Megan's dead, all stuff like that, and they leave the house, stuff like that, and meanwhile the alexa or whatever the smart thing they were doing it like turns his head and that's how the movie cuts off mm-hmm. so that can be interpreted different ways like did megan like download herself into alexa into and the is internet it, yeah yeah or did alexa become self-aware itself and that's skynet it's skynet exactly <laughs> so you can interpret that yeah. different ways we don't know yeah. you know but yeah. i like that how because it, 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 did, it did feel like an open-ended movie i wanted I mean, like yeah. what i was hoping like if if that child's play remake that came out a few years ago where mm-hmm. Chucky was a robot doll. Mm-hmm. Um, if he downloaded himself into a bunch of dolls, like an army, that's what I've been waiting for, an army of Chucky. Well, he did you know? that on a TV show. He did it on a TV show, but then like yeah. the, the next season, all those, the whole truck blew up and all those dolls were destroyed. Pretty I mean, much. yeah, he he take over the world if he actually. And, but did that's what, what I want. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Gremlins. You want the bad guy to win, basically. Yeah, Just... I want Gremlins with Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've been waiting for, and I thought, oh, that would be kind of cool if Megan does that. If if there's an army of Megans. Hashtag yeah. Chucky was right. Okay. Yeah, and then she forms like Voltron, and then you got a kaiju Megan. Oh God, then. <laughs> <laughs> I would bust so many nuts. No. <laughs> Megan V. Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. So what, what's the Godzilla? Name? Yeah. Right. Just, just all, okay. So I guess we move on to the next part of the podcast. Let's uh, we can move into the video game section. Okay. Right. And I'm gonna let Eli take over this. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think oh. i know about this <laughs> <laughs> okay so the thing we're going to talk about we're going to talk about um we're going to talk about street fighter 6 for a thing and the reason Even i'm letting Eli talk about street it, fighter last week I, I, I unbanned it just for this week and then we're going <laughs> to ban it reban it when we go back to it okay uh so yeah that's going on right now so yeah so the thing is with street fighter 6 is that even though i don't i'm still up in the air whether or not i'm even going to get this game or not uh and i thought it was eli but i guess it was somebody else i don't know who did it but somebody posted that they was excited for the new street fighter character that's coming out i wonder and if it was fat t might have been it might have been fat t might not have been fat t i don't know if it was i don't know t but, if you're listening did you post that shit yeah that's <laughs> what i want i don't know who posted it I, I figured it was you but somebody was hyped they were like hell yeah we got a native american street fighter who gets this so just showing you this is lily Lily is the uh the new character in Street Fighter. They show some gameplay of it. I'm not going to show it because I don't know wasn't how. Was she strict... in the last game though? She was not. This is a new character. But wasn't there some like Mexican chick from the last game? There was a big titty Afro Brazilian in the last one, but that was oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, not that one. And she's got some of T Hawk's moves. Like it just shows. She shows him moves. She does like the the dive and she goes up stuff like that. I don't think she's a grappler like T Hawk was or like that. But here's the thing: everybody keep talking about T Hawk this and T Hawk that. So, like I said, that's T-Hawk, but T-Hawk was not the only Native American character in Street Fighter. There was another one before Lily. There was also Julia. Really? Julia, and she was also from T-Hawk's tribe. What that's why that? T-Hawk came to Street Fighter to rescue her because M. Bison got his human trafficking thing on. He had a bunch of female assassins from all over the world. The Thunder, the what do they call and... the Thunderhawk tribe? Thunderfoot Something. tribe. Thunderfoot that sounds tribe. made some, like, some made-up bullshit. But... Uh, Ju- well, uh, well, Julie. Her name is Julie. Because Julia is actually from Tekken, who is also a Native American uh, character. She's Julia, awesome. yeah, Julia. There, yeah, Julia. But, but and her Julie, mom. Julie's in Tekken. Yeah, Julie. Well, did she have a mom is... too? Didn't Julia have a mom? Is yes, that... Michelle. Michelle. But I don't think it was a mom. I think it was like her aunt or something, something like that. Yeah, but, but yeah, they both they both had feathers, and that that's how you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Lily has feathers also. Yeah. <laughs> so i think you would be a fan but she does like fun she's like one of those speedy characters you know that you know you rush down you get in and get out stuff like that so i thought this was gnarly cool. looking war clubs i gotta say <laughs> i was saying she, she looks good but i know what you're gonna say eli she looks stereotypical stuff like that you know but here's the thing i i, I i'm one of those people <laughs> like i said i'm one of those people that any fighting game i will play the black person that's what i do regardless of what they look like if it's 
injustice, I'm picking not Greenland and Hal Jordan. I'm picking John Stewart. Uh, I'm picking you know DJ in these games. I'm picking Balrog. And yes, Street Fighter also has a dude in the game who is the worst character in any of these games. That his special move is basketball. So the thing <laughs> is, he doesn't have a fireball. He only stops people with a basketball. That's how he stops people. <laughs> So people think he's the sh- shittiest person on the game because they don't know how to use the basketball. You got to shoot it just right. So yes, uh, I, I always like Sagat, Sagat, Sagat. Sa- well, he's fun. He's you well, know, well. I, oh, here's some trivia: Sagat Sagat was played yeah. by Rest West Duty in the movie. Yes, he was. Who's Native American? Yes. Who's West Native America? Native American. I'm glad you pointed that out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so who go? Eddie, Eddie Gordo. Gordo. Okay, Eddie Gordo is the one guy, I, black guy, I don't play in a fighting game. The reason I don't play Eddie Gordo in a fighting game because everybody else plays Eddie Gordo in a fighting game. And plus, he's easy to beat. So if you get Eddie Gordo, I know how to beat you with Eddie Gordo. So, yeah. Well, yeah, you just jump. <laughs> no, that's how you die. That's how you die. Jump. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm versed in Tekken versus Street Fighter, but that's the thing. So i oh. tell you what, Eli, when the game comes out, since I don't know who was excited for Lily, but when the game comes out, if I get the game, I will play Lily. And I will beat ass with Lily. Okay. And I will do a combo video with Billy and Lily and put Billy out there. I'll make Billy, Lily go viral. Um, on Streets of Rage, Floyd, he's Maori though. But who's Floyd? He's the big dude with the robot arms. Oh, is that three? Floyd, no, that's four. That's four. four. That's four. Okay. Yeah. I I, I didn't play four. Okay. He's Maori, who natives count them as but he's uh, a, he's a robot he's a cyborg our, our, our indigenous cousins from okay. another mk country. jacks okay here's the thing mk uh Mortal Kombat is my blind spot i don't touch Mortal Kombat. i just don't <laughs> sorry so yeah if i did play Mortal Kombat, i would play jack but i don't touch but i don't play some more combat so yeah um let's see uh is a street fighter one of those games where you can smash on some buttons and win the fight oh no no there's not that that's, that's just talking shit just... yeah <laughs> Tekken, you can do that to a point <laughs> to a point when you first get the game you can't mash the Tekken and win but when you get to certain levels of Tekken, that should be get your kill so yeah very quickly so that's what i'm saying so anytime anybody picks up eddie gordo i can tell right there they suck they can't play so yeah uh, oh yeah night wolf on mk11 Mortal Kombat, you know night wolf is on there and night wolf was in Mortal Kombat 2 the movie yeah, you know. played by wow, little not little foot. What's his name? The rapper. He's a native rapper. Lightfoot. What? Lightfoot. Yeah, he's a native rapper. The guy who played Nightwolf in the Mortal Kombat movie. The talk. What's his face? The animalities. The mm-hmm. animality. Yeah. Yeah. You got to find your inner animality. You yeah. Know? <laughs> okay. And once he taught him that, he just disappeared for the movie. But yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh man. All right. So keep moving on to the next part of the podcast sure all right we're here let's go okay like i said this is comic book bullies where we talk about comic books and we're gonna jump into it uh yes i do have a retro book i'm gonna do with a black superhero in it but i'm gonna save that for the end uh eli i'm gonna let you go first see 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 what you got okay always going first (laughs) (laughs) i only got three books should i do nightwing go for it that's that's the money one right there yeah well you might need to help me with this because i don't I, did, I didn't read this one. I, I I don't know. I didn't know a lot of these motherfuckers. They're getting away from the Some, something. Shit. Something's happening with that. Oh, Teen Titans. Tom Taylor's writing yeah. Teen Titans. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting away from the street shit and they're doing all this superhero. Because they, they basically, he's leading into his solo, the, the team book. Yeah. So. Um, so basically, yeah. So, yeah. Nightwing is taking over the oh, Teen shit. Titans. My bad. <laughs> And the last issue, yeah. Uh, so he, yeah, it's the Teen Titans. But then, now this is this calls back to some older stuff in the Nightwing run, where uh, in, in Tom Taylor's Nightwing run, where Blockbuster's daughter, Blockbuster sold his soul's daughter to that demon guy in the, the other. I forget his name. He's, he's got he's got blonde hair. <laughs> I forget his name. Right? Okay. <laughs> um, but he sold his soul. So he can get power, blah, 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 blah. But then that demon guy wants her souls back or some shit. And he sends that king alien guy. He's a, he looks like, fuck, he looks like Burger King. 
but he's an alien from not Liberia, but some other, I can't remember the fucking names. So yeah, I'm not well versed in cosmic DC very well. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, and all that dark crisis shit, the old team towers is in ruin. So right. Starfires find, found the body of that king alien guy. Um, and that of course attracts Waller, who's like, hey, this 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 uh this king is like from some alien nation who's you know one of our allies, but why is his dead body underneath the rubble of a superhero headquarters? You know, so Waller's there, you know, to try to like damage control shit. And she sends one of the aliens from that king's planet to investigate. So at the end of the book, Nightwing and this alien who's in human form is examining this king guy's body. And um, that alien chick hits Nightwing over the head and then shapeshifts into Nightwing. Okay. So that's it. So if you see here, you, there's, Night, there's Dick on the ground. Dick on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Nightwing on the ground. And then there's the, the alien who transformed, shapeshift into Dick. And then goes out and meets the rest of the Teen Titans. And let's go, Teen Titans. I'm Dick Grayson. So that's where it ends. Um, I don't know if I like Dick Grayson just being like a pilot for Teen Titans. I like Nightwing to do street shit. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I wasn't like, yeah, what the hell is this guy's name? So, so here, I'll get rid of that screen. I'll show you this guy. This guy. Like I said, he looks like the Burger King guy. Uh, did he say he related to anybody or, uh, what's the, what's the, um, grinning man? Uh, they named, they named his planet and I can't remember it now. <laughs> T -t -t Tamara, T -t Tamara. Uh, let's see. With the T. The king, with the no, king. the king of La Vlatava. Vlatava. Vlatava, Vlatava. That, it, it has something to do with uh, Count Vertigo. Something to do with Count Vertigo, because I know he, your book. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I'm not. I wasn't familiar with any of that shit. So okay, I, I think I think there's Count Vertigo's brother or some shit. But I thought Count Vertigo killed him already. But yeah, yeah. I know it's something to do with that. Something to do with that. But yeah. So yeah, that's what happened. So the alien knocked out Nightwing and then transformed himself and then. Meet up, met, met up with the rest of the Teen Titans, and yeah, so that's where it ended. I don't know. I'll give it a three out of five. I, like I said, I I'm, I like it. Yeah, like you said, I like Nightwing being street level crime shit. This is getting all weird, you know, dealing with demons and aliens from other fucking worlds, and that look like Burger Tom King Taylor's shit. getting getting his other book yeah, warmed so, up. So when you finally read that book, read Nightwing, blah blah blah, to catch up what happened. You know, you know it's coming. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's my turn. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so the next book, well, the first book I'm going to do is Sins of, no, actually, not Sins of Sinister, Immoral X-Men. I heard some illiterate people out there saying Immortal X-Men because they think it's still the same book. to say new book, Immoral X-Men. Still part of that Sins of Sinister thing. I think it's part three or part four. I don't know where it is, somewhere in the book. Um, and we're still dealing with the fallout of what's going on here. Basically, this book is Emma Frost versus Mr. Sinister, but it's Emma Frost as Mr. Sinister versus Mr. Sinister. It's weird. I'll get to it. So let's catch up where we were. All right. So the book starts off with uh, New York. You know, it's been taken up by Mr. Sinister. Everything in town has a Mr. Sinister thing on it. And the only people left to fight him is S.H.I.E.L.D. So Nick Fury is putting together a team. And they're like, okay, we're going to upload this satellite into, you know, the old X-Mansion where they had their base set. If we do that, we'll get some more freedom fighters. We can take them out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to work. And and one of the girls asks, okay, so do we go through the front door or we go through the window? And Nick Fury's just like, uh, let's go through the window. And they jump out the window. And they fall to their death. The end. <laughs> why, did they, why did they fall to their death? Because Professor X was controlling them. <laughs> <laughs> Professor S was told them the whole time and he told them to fall out the window and die. So yeah. So, but he's crying because he like, I don't like using my powers like this. He realized that he could have achieved his dream 
Xavier's dream long time ago if he just would have forced people to do it, but he doesn't want to force people to do it. But now he kind of has to. And he kind of like, you know, thinking, I wish Magneto was here so I could tell him that I was right and he was wrong, you know. And Emma just like, look, will you quit moping over your boyfriend and let's get back to the quiet council because we got other shit to worry about. So they call the quiet council meeting and they do quiet council shit. That's what they're doing. They have to come up with a plan because they know that events are going to get too strong that the aliens like the Shi'ar and the Scrolls and the Kree are going to come kick their ass. Of it. Man, they probably won't even kick their ass. They're probably going to just send a nuke to Earth and just nuke that shit and just be done with it. So they got to find a plan to do that. You know, so Mr. Sinister, on the other hand, is out of the picture because since the Quiet Council can handle themselves, they don't need him anymore. So he's just got to figure out a plan. So what do I do next? I got to figure out. Oh, and they stole his his thing in order to reset the timeline. So he don't know how to reset the timeline. So now he's stuck here. and He don't know what to do. So he's got to find a way to get, you know, the Quiet Council to trust him. But he only knows one way. If he does like a hard reset, you know, like jab them with a needle and reset them. He can reboot their mind and make them under his control again. Because now the Quiet Council is no longer under his control. You know, they kind of have their own mind and thing like that. And they think they're above him. So he goes to take out the most powerful member of the Quiet Council, Emma Frost. And he's like, if I can just jab a needle in her neck, I can get control of her and she'll help control the Quiet Council for me. He tries to jab a needle in her neck. Boom. Turns out she's in Diamond. But she was in Diamond the whole time. The reason she looked regular was because mastermind who she keeps chained up in her sex dungeon basically makes her look like a human even though she's been in diamond for the whole time he was like did i do the right job mistress she's like no you dog stay there till i come back and i'll whip you you know and then mr fin- mr sinister runs off and shit like that and basically emma frost is like okay look mr Fin mr sinister went to some places i need all y'all to go to these places y'all go to wakanda y'all go to uh France, and I'll go to the last place I think Mr. Sinister's going to be at, Westchester Mansion, like the old X Mansion. Like, there's no way he's dumb enough to be there, which is exactly where he is right now, you know. So Emma Frost shows up with a whip or chain and just, like, bow to your mother. So she's, like, really into some dominatrix shit in this book. So, yeah, so she uh shows up with the whip and chain, and Mr. Sinister's just like, oh, Emma, I was ready for you the whole time. You shouldn't have came here to fight me by yourself. So he shoots her with a gun, like specifically designed to take out her diamond form and like blows her arm off. She was like, blow my arm off? Oh, that's cute. Well, guess what? Just like you're a sinister, I'm a sinister. So I clone some of Wolverine's DNA into myself. Voila, now she's got an arm. (laughs) So you can't kill it that easy. So now they go to fighting again. He was like, oh, Mr. And Miss Sinister's like, oh, you think it's that easy? No. And he calls in the nasty boys. The Nasty Boys was Mr. Sinister's group from the 90s, but he cloned them where they all have Cyclops' powers because he's some weird infatuation with Cyclops. But anyway, but so is Emma Frost. <laughs> <laughs> so she's she like, there's no Scott Summers on the planet that I can't have my way with. So they, they just start taking each other out. you know. So now he's got to fight. So now the Nasty Boys are out of the picture, and Emma Frost just whips him, and she's just like, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and just kill you right now. We don't need you anymore. You know, and Mr. Sinister just does this thing like, no, no, you still need me. And he clicks this thing. And basically what he's saying, like, I got more chimeras. Instead of having two uh, mutant powers together, I can put five mutant powers together. And I make a whole bunch of them that when the Shi'ar and the Kree and the Scrolls come for us, you'll have your army to beat them. So you still need me because if you don't, the Kree are going to put you under your heels. just like you're under my heel, like I'm under your heel right now. And she's just like, hmm, that's a good idea. But I just got one thing. But you got to make me a promise for one thing, Mr. Sinister, that won't let you live. Big like a dog. <laughs> and she's like, yes, mistress. No, call me mother. <laughs> she's like, yes. She's like, good boy. And she's like, okay, well, let's talk to the quiet council. And let's see what you think. And they're like, uh, okay, for the time being, let's let him live until we can take out the Kree and the scrolls or like that. And then we'll kill him. But for now, we kind of need him alive. They're like, okay. And... That's the book. To be continued. <laughs> so yeah. And he's just alive in front of all the dead nasty boys. So yeah. Um, I'm digging this crossover. I am. Even though it's just Age of Apocalypse redone. It's Age of Sinister, you know, but it's still fun. It's an incontinuous story, inconsequential. The whole thing's gonna be reset. But I'm having fun with what they're doing with it. So yeah. Uh I like it. Vic, I like it too. Yeah. Cool, cool. 
but where is Dr. Doom in the story? You think he show up, but yeah. Uh, do y'all review or oh, do we? D do we, Eli? <laughs> we might as well do it now. <laughs> go for it. The hey, request. We, we have a request. We there have you a go. request. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keith, this is for you. <laughs> on the um, fly. We're just doing it on the fly just because you asked for it. Yeah. Uh, let me grab that. So, yeah, Earth. I'll do Earth Divers number two. This is an indie book. Stephen Graham Jones, indigenous writer who writes horror books. And yes, Jake, I read Don't Fear the Reaper. I have a I have a review coming out in the next couple of days. Um, I wrote a review on that book for the website that I write for that it should be posted in the next couple of days. So and I'm wearing the shirt, but I'll get into that later. So Earth Divers number five, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Divers number five. So indigenous horror author, Stephen Graham Jones. This is his comic book about a, a future earth that's been fucked up, climate change. It's a dead planet. All, you know, all the white folks flew to Mars or wherever. They all left the planet because it was a dying planet. Only the natives are left alive on, on, on this earth, this dead earth, this dead planet. Well, they discover a cave that's like a time portal and they decide to go back in time and kill Christopher Columbus because the, the colonizations of the Americas is what led to the world's downfall. So one of them goes back in time, becomes like a crewmate on the ships as Columbus is sailing across the Atlantic and he's trying to sabotage the mission. Um, he's been found out throughout this, like, like I said, this is issue five. He's been found out. They've been beating him, torturing him, sort of kept him prisoner because they know he's, he's a saboteur, you know? Um, but in this issue, he finally goes, he finally goes ham. I've been waiting for him to fucking finally like lose it. Well, that's what he does. He got, <laughs> he kills like all the, all the, I think he's on the Nina or the Pinta. One of the one of, he's on one of Columbus's ships, and he one night he get he escapes his cabin and just kills all the crew and hangs their bodies. As you can see, that's the that's the one of Columbus's ships, and all the crew are all hanging, gutted and hanged. And okay. and this is what <laughs> this this page Leatherface is one of them, cuts off their one of the guys' face, <laughs> and you know. You know, he's like, fuck you, fuck what you did to my people, fuck all that shit what you did to the world. Yeah, I, I love that scene. There's other, there's other side plots going on about what's going on in the future. You know, everyone who's left alive in the future, they're wondering if this guy is actually succeeding in his mission because nothing's changed in the future. So there's all that going on, but I didn't give a shit. It was all about Tad, the main character, shanking all these Columbus's soldiers or sailors <laughs> and hanging the, and stringing their bodies up. So <laughs> just for that five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keith. Yeah. Um, the first issue he had, yeah, he's a linguist. So he had to learn like Italian and Portuguese and he studied Columbus's log journals and knew every detail about the voyage and stuff like that. So he was able to like, you know, tell when certain, falling stars happened on what dates and stuff like that. So they thought of him. So some of the crew crew were thinking of me like he was like a demon or he was in cahoots with the devil and shit like that. Um, and yeah. Uh, and I've heard according to bloody disgusting or dread central, one of those horror websites said that they are developing this series into like a, either a movie or a TV show. So that'll be cool. Can you say can. movie or what site maybe yeah. interesting a movie? Yeah, company? I don't know. It'll be cool because okay. once they cancel Reservation Dogs next year, <laughs> I shouldn't jinx it. But. I mean, hell, you had this scene in a movie. I mean, oh. you're there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this the money shot right here. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I this is the best the best issue so far in this series. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm a big fan of Stephen Graham Jones. I've read a bunch of his books. I just read his new slasher novel called Don't Fear the Reaper. Um, it's a set, it's the second uh, story in a slasher trilogy. The first one was called My Heart is a Chainsaw, which introduces us to Jay Daniels, the Native American final girl, 
Um, and yeah, I really dug on it. I thought the new book was more of a slow burn because it went into the emotional trauma because everybody's dealing with the shit that happened in the first book. But there was still some pretty solid kills and um, I dug on it. But I have a review. I write for a tribe called Geek. Um, I wrote a review over the weekend of the of the novel and it should be, I should be posting it. In the, it should be posted in the next couple of days. So yeah, but other than that, Still digging on Earth Divers. I think there's one more issue to go. So, one more issue to go. Okay. So, did they say anything about like another arc or? I'm not. I'm not sure. Not okay. sure how if this is an ongoing. But... Okay. No problem. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So up and up will meet next. Okay. So what we're gonna do? Book I'm going to do is Superman number one. Now the thing is, if you haven't read any Superman books, you don't have to. This is a fresh start. It's like number two, one <laughs> it's number one and it's i know a lot of times to say number one do you have to know anything about it no this is just superman being superman so as long as you know superman you're good you don't have yeah. to know anything to happen you don't have to know about the world war saga and all this stuff like, like dark that. Christ. i didn't read any dark, dark crisis. crisis you don't have to know any of that stuff this is just i didn't superman. read any of it That's and it. i just read this and i was fine you don't have to read action comics with all no. the Superman family, all this stuff. Yeah, like it's they, like a super family in that book. Yeah, it's super fan. Since basically, there's two Superman books right now. Superman one is, is Superman is Superman, but action comics is a super family. It's about yeah. all of them, you know. Yeah. But like I said, this is Superman. So let's get into it. Talk about it. So what we have here is Superman doing Superman stuff. Let's see. Let's go to it more time. Okay, there you go. You got Superman doing Superman stuff, and it's basically. A Superman book. So let's get to it and see what's going on with Newt and Superman. So I uh, don't care about that. Let's go to it. We got here. We got this big splash page. Yeah, crack a coom, you know. Oh, Jamal Campbell is the artist. I love Jamal Campbell. Technically, Black History Month. They got a black artist doing su- Superman. So that's pretty awesome. Hey, you know. that's cool. Yeah. That's the, this is ain't got a dead Naomi. The, the comic, oh, not the TV show. Okay. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and it, you know the whole thing matter of fact they give you all of Super- superman's backstory right here krypton blew up uh kent's he meets like luther goes to smallville meets pete ross all the so he meets uh family he goes i got you and that's when you got i you got them yeah who's but who's you? got you you yeah. know so that's the old lois lane callback you know from the superman movie if you see the superman movie they say that a bunch of times so who is this character this is live wire Livewire is not an original character. She was created on the cartoon, the Superman the Animated Series. So she's like another uh, Harley Quinn carryover, you know. But ever since then, she's been a Superman villain. So she basically does Superman's villain. So why is she doing evil supervillain shit right now? Because if you know uh, Livewire's backstory in the cartoon, in the 90s, she was a shock jock that got fired because her uh, her show was too raunchy. So now she's a podcaster. That's what she is in this show. But her act, her podcast was too raunchy then. So she got canceled. Not only the show got canceled, she got canceled because that's what happens, you know. So basically, she's going after her old boss who took her show down and he's on, on his wedding day. So they just, while they're talking, they just see Superman live while just fighting in the background. And meanwhile, somebody's in Superman's ear talking to him and we find out it's Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is talking to him saying like, man, why don't you just like break her arm and just take her out like super quick you know don't worry about saving people they're smart enough to just run off by themselves while lex luther is still in jail right now and i do like oh they don't show it uh i can't show his uh badge right there but his like his name tag like that doesn't say l luther it says a luther and i like the little callback because his name is alexander joseph luther because he was named alexander the great lex is just his you know nickname uh meanwhile he's on the news looking at everything that's going on still talking he's like man just beat her ass drown her just gonna, that's when live was just like you can't cancel me you know <laughs> i like that shit and anyway superman beats her ass superman actually beats her ass off panel we don't even know how he beats her he just beats her so we meet the new guy the new head of the metropolis uh crimes unit who is neo kakoa and he's over there he basically says i'm taking over for maggie sawyer so let, this is what i was going to ask you about this eli in the Nightwing books, is there a character named Maggie Sawyer, Sawyer in the books you read now? I don't remember. Okay, because they say because they say that's where Maggie is. They say Maggie's in Bloodhaven right now. So I'm just like, oh, okay, hmm. yeah, Maggie so, Sawyer. Maggie Sawyer. She's a, a a cop, you know, that was on oh. Metropolis, but she's left the books now. Maybe, this guy perhaps. is basically 
Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, I don't pay attention yeah. to cops. Either way, <laughs> either way, Maggie Sawyer doesn't matter. <laughs> I feel better when cops aren't around. <laughs> 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 oh man! So anyway, the new chief of police basically tells Superman, "Look, I've been wait, I've been looking to su- uh uh do super work with you for a while." And while he's talking, Superman's ignoring him because he hears the the you know the people in the back, you know the the wedding couple. Is it like live wire trash our wedding? Everybody's left. Should we cancel? And Superman's like, "Hold up! I this is a job for Superman." And he takes off. And what he does, he marries them. I'm gonna see if I can't blow up the picture, but he marries them. He's uh hangs out with the groom. He actually parties with them. He lets the groom beat him in an arm wrestling match. And then he takes their car and flies it off in the sunset, you know. And who's typing all this up? Clark Kent, <laughs> you know. And he's listening to music. We don't know what music to listen to. But we do know that it's a mixtape made by Pete Ross. And he's listened to a, a mini, mini disc player? They don't even make those anymore. But whatever. Anyway, you got um, Jimmy Olsen basically saying, you know, uh, I need you... Now, basically saying, don't worry about being late on a deadline. The new boss is not going to be mad at you. And that's when we find out the new boss is going to be mad at him because the new boss is his wife, Lois Lane, editor-in-chief. You know, Pear White went somewhere and Lois Lane took over because if she don't take over, somebody else is going to take over and they're not going to run the planet the way it's supposed to be run. So she's the next person in, char- in charge. So she takes it. So she does it. Uh, meanwhile, Lex Luthor is still in Clark Kent's ears, just telling him it's been 46 minutes, seven minutes since Superman hasn't been seen. You, where are you, Superman? You need to be saving people. And he's like, I need to go. And basically, that's why he's got the headphones on. He has the headphones on to tune out Lex Luthor while he's listening to music. And he's basically saying that, look, my the way my super hearing works is that it's tuned to certain people my parents, you, Batman, <laughs> you know. And Lex Luthor. So I can hear them at all times. So that's the reason he can hear Lex Luthor all the way in jail. Because he's tuned into Lex. So Lex can't heal him, but he knows he can hear him. So basically, he's just looking like, I just need a break. I think I need, maybe Lex Luthor is trying to help out. And maybe I need to listen to him. You know, but that's when some weird shit happens. They're like, hey, something's going on in the sky over there. And Superman takes off. And that's it. I just like the panel with him hit headphones still like that. That's a cool ass panel. Uh, he goes over the Lex Corp, and what's happened to Lex Corp? There's some weird nanites that are taking over building something, and it builds a super emblem on top of Lex Corp. Why is it does that? Because Macy, not Macy Graves, what's her name? Marcy, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's an R and B singer. <laughs> <laughs> Macy Gray. Hey, Macy Gray. That's who it was. Not Macy Gray. <laughs> Mercy Gray. <laughs> she doesn't sing any RB like that. But yeah. So Macy Marcy. Wasn't she yeah. in Spider-Man? The first Spider-Man. She was in Macy. And that was the last thing she did. That was an awesome man song. Hadn't done anything since then. You know, but anyway, let's talk about Mercy. Not Marcy. Not Macy. Mercy. Mercy Graves is also uh, uh, uh originated from that cartoon. So there's a lot of callbacks to the cartoon. She's not original comic book character, but she was migrated to the comics later on, you know. And basically, Superman's like, what the hell are you doing, Mercy? And he's like, look, Lex Luthor gave you control of LexCorp. And he's like, I don't want control of LexCorp. He's like, well, hold on, before you do that, and he just gives a sales pitch why you need to take control of LexCorp. And basically saying you got your own, basically the army that Lex Luthor had to kill you, they not work for you now. And also another callback to the Superman TV show, is that little kryptonite proof armor he had the justice lord suit oh it's like a little too oh and this and the supermobile that's not from the tv show that's actually a thing back in the 70s when mattel wanted superman to have his own car that's what that's from so yeah all little easter eggs and callbacks stuff like that he basically say all these people work for you superman that's it. The, like they don't need to work for me they can just work for themselves and they're basically saying well see they can't do that because the way the lawyers are set up if you don't take over LexCorp, LexCorp will be dissolved. And everybody that works for LexCorp will be out of work. Do you know how many people works for LexCorp? Half of Metropolis. So if you don't take the job, the economy of Metropolis will collapse. And he was like, man, fuck you, Luther. So yeah, Lex Luther got him <laughs> again. You know, So he's just like, all right, so what else do you have for me? So not only that, Lex Luther decides to train Superman by making a hologram that looks like like uh superman's father and he's calling him son and that's when superman's like uh uh-uh, i'm done with this shit well i'm gonna talk to lex lex luther right now i'm gonna have this out so he goes there and that's when mercy is just like uh he's on his way 
And Lex was like, he'll never make it to me because he knows he's going to get stopped by Parasite. <laughs> so Parasite is attacking his bus for no reason, just attacking people. Superman uh, takes the bus and he fights Le- uh, Parasite. Lex Luthor's in his ear telling him, you can't touch Parasite. Parasite would drain your powers. And he's like, yeah, I know. So and then but he was like, but I got this gun back at, at Lex Corp that if you use it on Parasite, it'll drain his powers. It may kill him, but who cares? You know, so Parasite is going at him. Superman does like a, a Hulk stomp, smash him in the woods, goes to him. He's like, uh, don't worry, we'll save you. But at the same time, it's like Lex Luthor didn't do this to me. Somebody else did it to me. And it's a whole bunch of other parasites in the woods. And they all grab him at the same time. And Lex was trying to tell him, I try to tell you, Superman, you know, it's not me that's after you. It's my enemy that's after you. And that's when we cut to this guy also listening to music and know that it's not Superman getting cut up that it's Bizarro because I had to zoom in. He has a backward S on his chest. So it's Bizarro. So yeah, oh. so he's so he's creating Bizarro, but even on I can't show you, but if you look at the screen, you have live wire chained up. You got Silver Banshee right there, Toy Man, but the 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 animated the tar, the cartoon design of Toy Man is there. So whoever made this comic, well, Josh Wiggins made it. He's taking all the elements from the TV show, from the cartoon. Matter of fact, these are the, the villains he fought on the TV show. Parasite and Livewire had a team up on there where they fought Superman. Bizarro was on there. And I don't know who this guy is, but yeah, that's what's going on. So long talk, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. So basically, Lex Luthor and Superman have a common enemy. Who is it? We don't know. Yeah, that's a book. Dude. Yeah, that dude. So all, overall, this is a strong start. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're not doing crazy shit. Superman's not in War World fighting Thanos and Dark Sides like that. It's just Superman doing Superman shit. It's simple. This is all you have to do. Yeah. It's, I don't know why DC makes it so hard. It's, it's, it's just do this. <laughs> Rogel Czar. Right. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jarrell comes back. Krypton's back. Like, don't do all that weird shit, man. Just do this. It's simple. Superman is not supposed to be a complicated character. So, yeah. I don't know. But yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so what you got? Well, my last book is Yoda, number four. Let's do it. So, yeah. Yoda. Hey, last book already? Yeah. yeah. Well, I read that Superman book and then I did my other two. And oh, now this okay. one's going. Um, so, on, yeah, this is that Yoda series. Um, Tim uh, and T, Mighty More Power Rangers. That's still oh, I'm not, yeah, I didn't, I didn't read that. I'm like, I aged out of the Power Rangers. I'm old, yo. I was like, yeah. I, I <laughs> like, you know the Turtles, Rangers. but you don't know the Power Rangers. I don't know the Turtles, but I don't know the Power Rangers. Very well. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but I am looking forward to that other crossover. What is it? Street Fighter versus, is it Turtles? Is it Turtles versus Street Fighter? You reading it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should, but the thing is, Street Fighter storyline sucks. So I don't really feel like doing it. I like playing the game. I don't really care about the storyline, but, but I, I, I may end up reading it anyway. So you won't really. We'll you don't do a see Splinter we'll do versus a thing. Blanca. You know, <laughs> we'll we'll do a thing. I'll read it. I, I feel like I'm obligated to read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is the Yoda book. See, I'm old. I'm reading Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, a thousand years old. This motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Yoda, it's his, his, it's his uh, solo series. It's, it's just Yoda kind of on Dagobah, reminiscing about his life and times and different adventures he's got in. This is sort of a new, the start of a new uh, story arc involving Count Dooku when he was, when Count Dooku was uh, Yoda's master or Yoda's knight or whatever. Okay. Um, a young Count, Count Dooku. How young? Not age. not youngling Count Dooku, is he? No, he's a, he's a, he's an adult. Um, okay, a younger younger Count Dooku. Okay, and um, and just them, uh, they're at they're they're in class. They're teaching a bunch of younglings and shit. Excuse me, and um, and uh, basically Yoda's asking Dooku for hey, check out these younglings and you. Would you like to give them any sort of advice in their lightsaber duels and stuff? And they're, he's so he's giving them lightsaber duel pointers and shit <clears throat> during class. And of course, the kids are like, "No, you guys, let's see what you guys can do." So then Yoda and Dooku have a sparring match in during class, and everyone's like, "Oh, cool!" So that's like the 
Remember, we saw them duel in Attack of the Clones. So that's like probably one of the first times they ever dueled. So yeah, Yoda and Dooku sort of have a sparring match and all the kids are like, did you see what he did? Dooku was dope. He almost beat Yoda and Yoda, but they're like, yeah, but Yoda knew what he was doing and blah, blah, blah. So they're all like, you know, all, you know, impressed with, you know, the duel between Yoda and Dooku. But the Wookiee, the Wookiee youngling, he is having visions. He's like meditating and he has these visions. And I think he has, he can see like the Clone Wars because he sees like, the Wookiees and Yoda fighting and he sees all this other shit going on and he's kind of troubled by it. Um, and then um, Dooku is like talking to that Wookiee, Wookiee kid. And he's like, the Wookiee tells him, yeah, I've been having these like dreams and blah, 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 blah. And Dooku is like, well, don't let anybody, you know, know about your vision because the Jedi don't seem to, they, they don't look kindly on visions because there's a there's a conversation about Sifo Diaz. You remember Sifo Diaz? Um, Did they ever say who Sifo Diaz was? He was I remember the like, name, but he was uh du- one of Dooku's friends, or was he, like one of Dooku's friends? Was it his Padawan, maybe? But but Dooku they never said him. they never said. Yeah, they they, <laughs> they they mentioned that Dooku and Sifo Diaz were friends, and that Sifo Diaz had visions, and that's why the the Jedi sort of shipped them out somewhere because they they think that uh you know psychics and visions you know uh lead to like um them worrying and fear they're worrying about you know things that are going to happen and it kind of like breaks their concentration with the force you know they don't like you know jedis dwelling upon their their visions you know because then they might try to prevent them which is what happened to anakin you know so um so when this Wookiee kid tells Dooku, yo, I'm having these dreams about all this war and shit, Dooku basically tells him, don't tell anybody, especially Yoda. So that's kind of where the book ends. So I thought it was pretty cool. You know, young Dooku and Yoda and these Jedi kids, these little Padawans, like all, you know, um, all excited about lightsabers and shit. Um, did you watch, there's that Tales of the Jedi on Disney Plus. I thought it was pretty cool. It's got uh, story arcs with young Dooku and that. When Dooku and Qui Gon Jinn were uh, okay, when they were training. Mas- I mean, yeah, when when they were because Qui Gon was uh, Dooku's Padawan. So pretty cool shit, and it, it, it sort of it kind of kind of showcases Dooku's sort of you know becoming despair disparaged with the you know his mistrust in the Jedi. Which is why he left. Yeah. Which is why he left. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, no, I, I, I do like the theory they were saying that if Qui Gon was still alive, he probably would have joined Dooku. Yeah, because Qui Gon was like a rebel. Like he, he because he didn't, he w- he wasn't really feeling the Jedi either. Yeah, he was always breaking the rules too. And shit. Yeah. So I kind of no, like I dig on this. this. is a four out of five. I've been digging on this story. You know. Obviously, so. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. So last book I'm going to do, like I said, it's going to be a retro book. What I've been doing this week. Well, this month, like I said, it is, where is it? Retro, retro. There you go. Okay. So what I, <clears throat> what I've been doing this, this whole month is that I've been doing like one retro black book a week and basically talking about a black superhero or black supervillain, whichever one, you know, just saying what they're saying. So what we're going to do this week, ah, let me see if I can get that up. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, let's see. See if I can get this up. So what we're going to do, since we were doing like an Ant-Man, I was going to do this book last week, but I think I did something else. I don't remember what I did last week. You, but, did, uh, you did fucking Kang, Ramatut or whatever. Oh, yeah. I did do Ramatut. Okay, I did do Ramatut. So this week we're going to, I was going to do like an Ant-Man thing, but this week we're going to do Goliath. Now, I'm sorry, not Goliath, Black Goliath. That's the difference. So if you remember, a lot of people watched Ant-Man and Wasp, and they saw Lawrence Fishburne show up in the movie. They're like, why the fuck is Lawrence Fishburne in this movie? The reason Lawrence Fishburne is in this movie is because in the comics, he's actually a black superhero. Although he was killed off in Civil War, which is really the only notable thing he did in Marvel Comics, which is why nobody cares about him. But we're going to talk about his first appearance. We'll talk about his first appearance in an actual Luke Cage comic. And why is he in this comic? Because Luke Cage slept with his wife. And that's why they're fighting. My so, yeah. man. 
<laughs> they had coffee. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So yeah, so the the debut the debut of Black Goliath. Okay. Uh yeah, so the book starts off with um uh, with these uh the, okay, so they're in California. Like I said, Luke Cage is in Harlem. He's based in Harlem, but he's in California right now. And he goes to the circus and he sees uh like I said, Among Us walks black goliath you know and he sees the trapeze artist and the thing is it's raining and it's windy outside and these trapeze artists decide to do the act anyway and what happens they slip and fall so while they slip and fall luke cage uh oh and the trapeze snaps also so luke cage jumps up there grabs the guy and since he's like 300 pounds he's heavy enough that he can kind of tilt the uh the tent into uh, well tilt the pole into a net which saves the you know saves the trapeze artist's life you know so they fall and the trapeze artist, his brother, you know, his partner, trapeze artist, they're like, well, thank you, Luke Cage. We got to get the hell up out of here. Meanwhile, Luke Cage is with his his buddy, his sidekick back in the 70s, D.W. Griffin. Now, I always wonder why the hell was this guy named D.W. Griffin? Because yeah, what the fuck, man? I don't, for those who don't know who D.W. Griffin is, D.W. Griffin is the Hollywood's very first director. He directed The Birth of a Nation, which is to this day used as recruitment for the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. So, but because wow. it was the it was the ver it was the first full length movie, basically, basically fe- full yeah. length movie, full yeah. feature, you know, a clan movie. That's what it was about. Yeah, where, where the Ku Klux Klan are heroes and shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's who he decided to name this 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 character after. And he teaming up with Luke Cage. What? Okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And ivory. <laughs> yeah going back there anyway so these two trapeze artists the reason he was he told his brother he was like well why don't we thank luke cage why we gotta hit now nah, we gotta get back to the capo man because we just fought daredevil about a month ago so we gotta get out of here because we can't handle no superheroes around our business so we find out who these guys are later on in the book you know um meanwhile the reason luke cage is here is because his girlfriend claire temple uh ran away sent him a dear, a dear john letter or a, a dear luke cage letter and she left harlem and went to california but she left her like address from the hotel she was staying at on there so he was like well she must want me to know where she's at so let's go to california and find her and when he goes to the hotel they the hotel tells him that uh yeah she's been hanging out at this circus the whole time so he goes there sees his girlfriend claire and she's just like claire why, why the hell did you leave me and come to california to this this circus you know they hug and miss and stuff like that and she's if like okay I yes to beg and plead, <laughs> <laughs> right you had to drive 30 hours to go see your girlfriend like that and she basically tell her, okay there's a good reason why i'm here in california and why i didn't want you to come to new york i came to california to be with my husband and he's like wait you married what? yeah he didn't know she was married the whole time you know yeah yeah so he's like well well fuck this i'm out of here yo you have congratulations you and your husband he's like no 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 it ain't what you think it ain't that see my husband is bill foster bill foster was the same name of the character in ant-man the watson uh lawrence fisher play he was like yeah that's my husband but we're divorced i can remember this was in 1974 Divor- divorce was an ugly word back then it's not like it is now everybody wasn't getting divorced left and right back then so she's saying she divorced but she didn't want to tell Luke Cage she was divorced at the time, you know. So anyway, they basically tell her how they met. They met in, I don't know, Harvard or wherever the hell they met. They met, they got married young. They argue, fuss and fight all the time. They got divorced. Through dishes. Yeah, through dishes at each other, all stuff like that. So yeah, so she went to be a nurse and Bill Foss went to go work for Tony Stark. And that's, that's it. That's the last time they met. Meanwhile, Hank Pym got in some trouble. He got big and he his his growth... Uh, serum wasn't working how it's supposed to so he called bill foster and like helped him perfect the formula bill foster did that and when he did that he kept the formula for himself using himself it became the black goliath and that's what he is right now so yeah but he don't know how to shrink so he just stuck at 15 feet you know so the thing is bill foster knows how to fix himself but he needs the money to do it that's why he don't want to call hank pym he want to call tony stark he wants to do it on his own but the thing is, he, he didn't have any money, so that's why he joined the circus to get money to basically complete the serum so he can shrink himself. And he don't. And the reason he didn't, she didn't tell Luke Cage what was going on because Luke Cage is an ex-convict. And since Bill Foster has all these ties with the Avengers, like Tony Stark and Hank Pym, if they find out that 
uh, uh, ex-con is even around here, the adventure is going to be on your ass. So you're like, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. But still, why didn't you at least tell me you were leaving? I guess when you get back with your husband, all your, your side dudes, you just leave them alone and stuff like that. She's so like, no, nah, don't be like that because I think I'm still in love with my husband. And that's when, get your hands off my wife, <laughs> you know. And that's when Black Life shows up and he's ready to beat some ass. Like, if you get your hands on my wife right now, we're going to have some problems. He's like, your wife is my woman. Let's go. You know, so they just start fighting and basically like, you know, punches them in the gut, flattens them. But, you know, Bill Foster is just like, look, you don't know who I am. And just slaps him away like a fly. He's like, so he don't know who, who Luke Cage is. So he just grabs him, tosses him across the room, throws him some shit. He's just like, nah, stay down before I like really fuck you up. And that's when Luke Cage is like, you must don't know who I am. So that's when he cocked back and punches him in the shin, you know, takes him out. So that's going back and forth. Other shit, this big side story I don't care about. Move on past that. <laughs> back then, Claire's is like, no, guys, don't fight over me. You know, she don't, she's not real convincing about it, but yeah. So he grabs, you know, like one of the nets the trapeze artists use and thinking that will trap Luke Cage. Luke Cage just goes through that shit like it's nothing, punches uh Black Goliath in the face, and then he falls 15 feet to the ground because of the fall he was. Boom, hits the ground, and he grabs the stuff and starts to smack him in the face of like that. And but so basically, kind of like evenly matched right now. You know, but before they can finish the match, that's when they both get, you know, hypnotized by the ringmaster. Because those two trapeze artists that he saved, they work for the circus of crime. You know, some old daredevil slash Hawkeye slash Avenger slash whatever villains to be continued. Yeah. So that's the story. The first uh, appearance of Black Goliath. And he really didn't have too many appearances past that. Like I said, I think he teamed up with like the thing for like tag team wrestling duos. And that was it. That's pretty much it. So he wasn't really a big thing. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. I think that's why I did Kane last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's still a cool story. Just want to give you an old throwback. So if you want to know about who is Black Goliath, that's Black Goliath. So yeah. Um, anything else we got to talk about? I'm booked out. That's all I got. Yeah, so am I. I'm booked out. Okay. Yeah, uh, like I said, we got some listeners this week. Appreciate y'all, everybody jumping yeah. in. Like I said, if you're listening this long, definitely like, share, subscribe. Uh, just listening and watching actually help us out in the algorithm. It'll push us further in there. And go know. check out Outright Geekery. That's our parent company or something. Are we still there? I think, yeah, they, they push our shit. So that's oh. Gomer's shit. And what are they yeah. called? Comic Cat? Not Comic Cast. Uh, yeah, I don't think Comic Cast is even a thing anymore. No, uh, what do they call it? This Geeks and Comics. Then Hulk dig down Ant Man. Did Hulk dig down Ant Man? I don't think so. He should. <laughs> I think he did. He probably did. I don't know. Probably one of those throwaway books. Uh, by going at his knees. Yes, you talk about in that in that that uh cartoon movie. Yes, he like punched him in his knees and dropped them. Yeah. Uh, Black Panther did the same thing too in one of those cartoons. But yeah. Uh, basically, it's like the easiest way to take down Giant Man. Why? See, that's why y'all saying Thanos could take him out. No, Thanos would just hit him in the knees. That's it. So, uh, who else we got? Uh, I think I found. That's random. Is he talking about that fucking oh uh, <laughs> X Men book? The X Men book. Yeah, that's Emma? the thing that they really turn Emma Frost into some kind of like uh dominatrix. dominatrix. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> she got like a sex dungeon down there. She like hides mutants down there and shit. So yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, the X-Men are weird. That's all I got to say. Uh, yeah, that's all we got. Like I said, next week will be March. We'll be done with Black History Month. We'll now be in whatever March is. I don't know. I'm pretty sure some Saint somebody Patty's will claim Day. that part. Yeah. St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Everybody will be Irish then. We'll, yeah. do, we'll, do, we'll do Daredevil comics all month. <laughs> Who else is Irish? Somebody else is Irish. Banshee. We do a ban- Banshee X-Men book. So, yeah. There you go. Okay. I do a silver banshee Superman book, you know. <laughs> we'll find something to do. Uh, we appreciate everybody listening. Like I said, until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet challenge.
Coco. I got it for the Lolo. Turn up. I'm in love with the Coco. Hit my plug, that's my Cholo. Cause he got it for the Lolo. If you snitching, I go loco. Hit you with that 38. Niggas thinking that I'm solo. Fit the deep, they like, oh no. No, 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 please, no. Heard the fans taking photos. I know nothing but the popo. Baking soda, I got baking soda. Baking soda, I got baking soda. Whip it through the glass, nigga. I'm blowing money fast, nigga. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco. I got it for the lolo. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco. I got it for the Lolo. Turn up. I'm in love with the Coco. 36, that's a kilo. Need a brick, miss my free throw. I'm in love just like Neo. Busting shots, now he Neo. Free my homies, fuck the CEO. Puto. Fuck the judge, fuck my P.O. All this talk like I'm Nino. Water whip like I'm Nemo. Baking soda, I got baking soda. Baking soda, I got baking soda. Whip it through the glass, nigga. I'm blowing money fast, nigga. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco. I got it for the lolo. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco. I'm in love with the coco.